Bike computers have come a long way since I began riding. Gone are the mass and the tangle of wires that used to wrap around your frame. And instead, we have Gorilla Glass, advanced GPS routing, and a massive, massive battery life. But the thing is, phones have advanced a lot as well. Gone are the days where we used to play snake into the early hours of the morning, or when we used to use our phone as a bicep weight kind of apparatus. So, I thought I'd examine different aspects of both options and see which one may work best for your riding. We are used to the workings of our phones. Many are very user-friendly and simple to use, which means that for the less tech-savvy amongst us, well, this is great, you know? We can get started straight away, track some simple metrics on our phones whilst we're riding without much background reading. And talking about getting going, well, Guess I better get into some kit. Let's go, folks. Here we go. Ho ho! Apps such as Komoot provide simple to use platforms to record, plan, and navigate routes on your phone. So you don't have that super techie barrier to overcome when you're out on your bike and you're looking for directions for where to go. That's rather simple. With a simple phone mount for your bike, it's easy to get your phone to double up as a bike computer. Simply mount it to your handlebars, download an app, and then off you go. There are many different mounts out there which are relatively cheap to buy if you compare it to the price of a bike computer. The Topic Ride Case provides a sturdy mount and is compatible with a whole range of different phones and will quickly turn your phone into a bike computer. Using a phone as a bike computer can be a great way of getting into the sport a little bit more. Either by navigating onto some new roads or using a simple app to track your progress. Or it might just be that you want to find out how far you've actually ridden and at what speed. As you progress through the sport, you may want to think about getting a dedicated cycling computer. Now, I think by now we are all used to using the mapping function on our phone to navigate around in normal day-to-day -day life. And buying a bike mount for your phone makes it easy to continue this hands-free when you're out cycling. I think it's a great way to navigate, especially if you live in a city, for example, where you're making constant different journeys and changing your route often throughout the day. On the market these days, bike computers do have great options for navigation with off-road calculations, turn-by-turn -turn directions, and back to the start routing. If you look at my Wahoo, for instance, it's just so easy to follow the route right there in front of you, and it's purpose-built to be easy to follow as well. Battery is a big point for me personally. I love having a phone because it's one less device to have to think about, one less device to have to charge in the evening. However, it is a major bummer when your phone runs out of battery, especially when you're out on a ride. And if you have lots of background apps running on your phone, well, it will drain your phone's battery even more quickly. So, it is something to bear in mind if you are heading out on a longer ride. Your phone is not designed to always have its screen on, and neither is it designed to constantly have GPS navigation on. If you do use these functions, it will drain your battery quicker and potentially run out of battery halfway through your ride something you definitely don't want to happen. Bike computers have massive battery life these days, being designed for the one specific function of focusing on your riding. For example, the Wahoo Roam has a claimed 17 hour ride time. So if you are doing lots of longer rides out on your bike, then a bike computer might be a good bet. However, if you do live in a city or you're doing lots of smaller loops within the week or smaller rides between places, then a phone will be a good bet as well, I guess. Rain is a guaranteed part of cycling. And well, when you're out on your bike, it's quite often that you'll encounter the odd shower or two. But bike computers are designed for the job with easy to use buttons that won't let in all that moisture into your beloved computer. Phones are a bit less resilient here. And personally, when the weather does turn bad, I prefer not to use my phone when I'm riding. And I like to wrap it up in a sandwich bag or a plastic bag and put it in my pocket where it's well protected. However, if you do want to use your phone when riding in the rain, 
There's plenty of options with maybe a dry bag that Topic make, which you can simply put over your phone and mount it onto your handlebars. However, a bike computer is aerodynamically designed. It's made to withstand the rain, and many are very strong these days, made from Gorilla Glass, so they can withstand plenty of impacts. So if you aren't a fan of getting your phone out in the driving rain, then a bike computer might be a good shout. It's raining. Right, I'm out of it. Absolutely gonna get soaked now. As if on cue, it has started raining. So for me, that means I'm about to set my Wahoo to navigate back to home and back to shelter. Right, bear with me, folks. Oh, it's really raining now. Where's my, where's my Wahoo? There it is, there it is. All right, come on, Wahoo. Let's get out of here, back to the studio. Back to the studio. Phones can compromise their accuracy by relying on third-party information to calculate things such as elevation and speed, which are often calculated after a ride has been completed. Your phone isn't thoroughly tested to perform as a bike computer, and it may have unreliable GPS reporting that is only accurate to around six feet. However, in ideal conditions, a bike computer will be accurate to around two feet. Phones generate many more distractions when you're out on the bike, with notifications from things such as texts, calls, and different apps which may be running in the background. Bike computers are much less likely to distract you and take your eyes off the road. Instead of hitting you with every notification from every background app that's running on your phone, a bike computer will only give you the notifications that you need. And also, I think, when you're out on your bike, sometimes you are looking to get away from your screen and your phone and the distractions that it can cause you in your everyday life. It's worth noting that the display on a phone can be hard to read in the glare of the bright sun, whereas a dedicated bike computer has screen brightness, which is much easier to read outside. One thing to bear in mind is compatibility. Bike computers are head units that are designed to work with a whole ecosystem of gear, such as heart rate monitors, power meters, and static bike trainers. Amp Plus is a wireless system which communicates with these different items. And on a phone, it may not be possible to connect. However, this is changing with power meters such as the FSA Power Box and the Wahoo Ticker heart rate monitor now offering Bluetooth connectivity. The wireless system of choice for many of our phones. Bluetooth is yet to seep into all these devices across the board though. And if you look at other sensors, such as the Garmin Varia lights, they will solely rely on AMP Plus, that wireless system. So if you are looking to use your device with a variety of different sensors and gear, then, well, a bike computer may be the one for you. Bike computers range in price from £45 for something with quite basic functionality, such as the Cat Eye Quick, to something like this, my Wahoo Roam, which comes in at around £350. And it has great advanced functionality and amazing route navigation. So if you are looking at getting a bike computer, it will be an investment. At the same time, a top range phone these days can cost close to a grand if you're looking at an iPhone 11. So I guess it's that balance about whether you want to use your really expensive phone out on your bike and maybe risk it falling off, or maybe you have invested so much in your phone that you prefer to use it as that device that you use for everything. Everyone have their own situation and opinions on this. Personally, I ride so much that I think I'd lean more towards a bike computer. And you know, I don't know if I could justify spending so much on a phone, if I'm really honest, but everyone is different and everyone has their different priorities. I hope this has given you a better idea of some of the different aspects of a bike computer compared to your phone. Depending on your reasons for riding, both can be really useful additions that will aid your cycling. But I'd really like to hear from you guys. Which one do you prefer when you're out on your bike, a phone or your bike computer? I'd love to hear from you and please let me know in the comment section below. Thanks for watching everyone. Right, I better go off and dry my kit because it was absolutely soaked when I was out there a second ago.